Thanks, Henry. Um, yep, my name's Ian Marshani. Nice to meet you. I'm a, a product manager on the Google Enterprise team, Android Enterprise team. I'm uh, Nikita Kostov. I'm Angel Lead on Android Enterprise team in London. Uh, and hopefully you've been enjoying the enterprise presentations, lots of good uh, content. We've been talking about some pretty incredible enterprise features, some really great opportunities in the enterprise space. Uh, and we kind of want to tie it together a little bit uh, to show you ways you can get started. Maybe if you haven't thought about, uh, or you've, you've thought about management concepts and how they'd be useful in your applications in the past, um, but didn't really bother to invest the time in investigating, or maybe you looked at it and it looked a little too difficult. Um, our goal here with the Android Management API is to make managing Android devices incredibly simple, make Android the platform for management uh, and for mobility in the enterprise. And the way we do that, we think, is making a really simple, easy to use API uh, that actually takes you out of the business of writing Android code as far as management's concerned. So I'm going to try and sell a bunch of Android developers on not writing any more Android code. Hopefully that's a, that's a message that, that resonates. But, um, so the best way to kind of illustrate and get started with what we're trying to do is to show you traditionally what it looks like to manage devices. Actually, just a quick survey. Is there anybody doing management today um, with, uh, with applications on Android? Anybody in the audience? All right, a, couple, a handful of guys. All right. Anybody who's been thinking about lightweight management features or like locking down devices as something that could be useful for your business applications. Great. All right. Well, for all you guys, I'm going to tell you, management is possible. We're going to make it super easy for you, hopefully by the end of this presentation. And actually, at lunch at our code lab, we'll get you started, and you can add management to your application in a couple of days. So this is kind of the traditional architecture diagram for managing an Android device. So you got a few different bits and bobs here that you got to work with. Um, first off, you have your EMM server or your application server that's deciding all the policies and management constructs you need to apply on the device. But to get all of that information down to the device, you've got to work through a few different channels. So one channel you have is your proprietary communications with your application on the device, and that we'll re refer to as a DPC. That's a, just a term we, uh, we added. We love terms over at uh, Android Enterprise. <laughs> we have terms for everything. Uh, DPC is a device policy controller. And that allows you to um, claim elevated privileges on the device and then set management uh, features using those APIs. Um, so you'll probably have a proprietary communication mechanism there. And then you're calling framework APIs to manage the device. But you're also going to have to probably wake up your application and do kind of time sensitive operations through Firebase. So you got Firebase cloud messaging is, a, is another connection. And then actually application distribution, right? We heard some uh, really good things. Uh, just, about, just now about managed Google Play. You might have heard some things yesterday about it as well. It's a really robust um, set of capabilities for getting applications onto devices and sending down configurations. Um, but that's also another set of APIs that you have to interact with if you're managing the device. Um, so let's take a, let's take a trivial, trivial use case. Um, let's say you have an application installed on the device that's super business critical, um, but then the IT admin decides that we need to either replace that application with a different one, or um, we're phasing it out. We've rolled the capabilities into a new app. So we're going to remove an application from the device that previously could not be removed by the end user, what we'll call a mandatory app uninstall. All right, so first step, we're going to wake up our management application on the device. And then we're going to tell, get the, the application to pull the changes from the server. That is, we need to remove the application. Once we have the policy changes, uh, we will call the necessary API to unblock the uninstall, because that was a management feature we had to turn on in order to prevent the user from uninstalling. Then we have to confirm that the policy changes went back. So we got to tell the server that everything's good on the device. Um, and then we can send a play uninstall request to uh, Google Play's infrastructure. But chances are we probably didn't get the timing right. And uh, so we're going to check to see if the uninstall went through and probably retry because it failed. Um, and yeah, so that's seven steps with three separate API surfaces in order to remove an application. It's a little bit tricky. Um, and unfortunately, us at uh, Android Enterprise only have ourselves to blame for this, which is why we uh, thought we'd do something better. Um, and Nikita is actually going to walk us through some feature development. Right. Uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, so let's say you want to uh, implement a new feature. New Android is the key comes out. Um, and uh, so first, you, you need to do client development on your EMM DPC client. Uh, of course, you have to 
if uh, on the on the client there are multiple APIs uh, involved, you have to use all of them in certain sequence, uh, maybe handle some edge cases, some error codes. Um, in some cases, uh, you know, OEMs, they may have some um, uh, other custom um, implementations, uh, but also you have to do substantial amount of QA. So then, um, if you have application management, uh, you have to integrate with the Play MM API. Uh, you may need to do Firebase uh, um, integration, and finally, you have to align all of those uh, bits and pieces on the on the backend uh, and present sorry present all of the feature in a in a nice way to to your IT admin. Uh, we think uh, we can do better. And uh, Ian is going to talk about. So, at least four different places, and again, you have to—you really do have to tie everything together. It's really quite complicated. So we want, we thought we, as Nikita says, we, we we think we can do better. So we introduced a new API. It's effectively an abstraction layer on top of all of that. So you start with your EMM console or uh, your management web page, whatever it, whatever construct you have for uh, um, surfacing your features uh, to your administrators, the people who are actually configuring everything. You assign some policy. We'll talk about policy in a little bit. Um, but instead of kind of uh, knobs and levers that are built into the Android framework, we've actually implemented a policy structure on top of that that kind of turns uh, somewhat um, incoherent APIs into meaningful, easy to read policies. And then you send it to our API. And we do all the rest. Nice and easy. Um, so how do we do that? Well, first off, we have our own management app on the device. It's effectively replacing uh, the application that you would build. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that the engineers who build the features into the Android platform can then subsequently build the management capabilities into the application. So you're actually getting the people who build Android building the management construct. We'll talk a little bit more about this concept in a bit. But also, we, we are able to use uh, the rest of our infrastructure that you guys would already be leveraging. Um, and make sure all the timing works out, make sure the race conditions aren't there, all sorts of fun things like that. So let's, let's dig into this a little bit more. Why use the Android Management API? Simple, powerful, native. Buzzwords, let's, let's dig in a little bit more. Simplicity. This is where we started with this API. We wanted to provide a really, really easy way to get started with management um, for use cases that traditionally uh, would not have management uh, as, uh, as something that you started with, right? So um, we'll talk about some of our partners in a little bit and some folks who have had success with this. But the idea here is being able to go from nothing to management uh, in, in the shortest amount of time possible. You should be able to not think of management as a feature. It should just be some components of, of what happens on your application. Um, and so what that means from, from our side then is we need to reduce the complexity of having multiple API surfaces um, that are required to co you know, coordinate all of these APIs together into one consistent experience. So that's exactly what we've done with our API. We sit above all of the independent API surfaces that you would need to otherwise build your own solution. Um, and then we make sure that everything talks to, each, talks to each other very nicely and provide you a consistent single API surface to integrate with. And that means you don't have to do any more Android development. You can do uh, server-side development using our RESTful API. It's nice and easy. It's really, it's really slick and easy to understand. Um, and you don't have to worry about what it looks like on the device. We take care of that for you. We talked a little bit about policy. Um, so basically, the, the, the heart of the Android management API is the policy structure. And it's basically just a big JSON blurb with a bunch of key value pairs and. Uh, that you can configure, right? We s tell you what policy capabilities are available. Um, we kind of wrap them up nicely and take disparate sort of APIs that otherwise you would have had to map together, right? So we talked about mandatory uninstall previously. That would be a um, one little bit you could flip, but then you'd have to pair it with another little bit if you wanted to control the behavior of the app in another way. So we take all of these little bits and pieces and combine them into use cases that make sense for you and for your customers. And then we surface that in easy to use key value pairs that you can add to your JSON. And finally, we think we can add simplicity not only in integrating, but also in uh, managing diverse fleets. So one of the challenges is the, uh, the dirty F word of Android is fragmentation, of course. Uh, and we think we can help with that by providing a consistent API surface and handling all of the device differences ourselves, whether that's Android 5 through 8, right? 
historically that meant you had to do slightly different things with your Android application on different versions. Um, again, we handle the complexity of that for you so that you don't have to worry about what version of Android you're managing. You don't have to worry about what OEM you're managing. You just worry about Android. On top of that, we're offering a lot of great features in the API. So uh, one of the things that, that has happened over the years since we started investing in enterprise back in the Lollipop days on the Android side uh, is we've had a massive proliferation of features. Uh, we have features in every version since Lollipop. Uh, we have numerous features in every release. And it's historically been very difficult for the ecosystem to keep up with those features um, because some of them are quite complicated. Uh, some of them don't quite make sense at first. And also, frankly, Android newer versions of Android don't always have the greatest adoption rates. And so it doesn't necessarily make sense to invest in heavy features on the latest versions of Android. We think the Android Management API is really well suited to help with this because by building the features ourselves into our management stack, you can benefit from those features on day zero of an Android launch. So we're working towards becoming complete, have complete feature parity with a version of Android at the launch of that version, all of the management features. Um, for the upcoming P release, we, we're not quite there yet, so we'll have uh, kind of core features that we think are really important to the management story on P, and we'll actually demo some of the, those for you in a minute. Um, but in the future releases, you should expect that you'll have the uh, complete gamut of management capabilities day zero on an Android launch. And then implementing those features, we're actually, we'll show you how easy that is as well. Um, it's just a couple lines of code change. Um, enterprise recommended is something we haven't really talked a lot about at this, uh, at this particular event, but um, it's an it's initiative from Google to kind of um, take, a, take a stance for, and open up to the community and say, uh, who among you really wants to start to differentiate in the B2B space and, and work with us to, um, to kind of distinguish yourself with a, a, a kind of elevated set of criteria? Um, and so in the management space, we have a kind of an elevated set of criteria to be considered a enterprise recommended vendor for management. Um, we have all the features that you need to meet that set of uh, criteria uh, within the Android Management API. And so you can get to that elevated status very quickly from a technical perspective just using our API. Um, I talked a little bit about how the APIs work together. We think there's a, there's a tremendous amount of power in making sure that the play stack and the device management stack work well together. And so that's, that's stuff that we continue to invest in. And finally, uh, similar to the Chrome model, and unlike the Android model, we update every six weeks. And that's because Nikita used to work on Chrome. So he's very passionate about that. Um, finally, the kind of the last tenet that we take to bear when, when designing this is thinking about how do we make this look and feel as natural and as intuitive as possible on an Android device. We want to make management uh, not like a separate component to Android that's kind of tacked on at the application level, but something that really looks and feels native. It's like how Android was designed to be managed. Um, and so we're doing a few things to make that possible. First off, from a UI perspective, we're making our application kind of disappear. So we're removing our launcher icon. We're hiding all of our status into settings. Um, and for end users, we think this is really, really powerful. It means that they don't have to think about management as this separate construct that they get from a company that they don't really know. It's not their, it's not their company, right? It's a, it's a third party that they, um, they maybe don't know about. The IT admin still has that direct relationship, but the end user doesn't need to have that. Um, and we'll show you some of our slip provisioning flows that we're able to do because of uh, some, some of this uh, little Google magic I'll refer to in a minute. Um, on top of that, though, we then make sure that we implement our own best practices. So um, anyone who's uh, worked with Android Enterprise in the past knows that sometimes we get things wrong and we push out a, a version of Android and there's a bug, right? Like we can, we can all admit this. There's plenty of bugs in the Android, uh, Android framework. And sometimes we need to come up with a workaround. We need to prescribe a new best practice on how to fix that issue on a particular version of Android. And it's not always the cleanest. Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than otherwise we'd like. Uh, what we can do with the Android Management API is really obscure that complexity for you, implement our own best practices, figure out the problems ourselves, and fix them at the app level so that you don't have to worry about the fact that NuGet has a kind of a weird workaround with regards to account management that means that you have to do a, but, you know, two sprints worth of work just to make sure that you have a consistent story for your end users. Nikita had mentioned QA. Uh, it's something that we're really passionate about. 
uh, making sure that you guys don't have to invest in client-side testing nearly as much. We still think it's probably worthwhile just to make sure you're getting the experience you think you are. But at the end of the day, um, our team is taking the brunt of the responsibility of doing all that client-side testing on a diversity of devices. Uh, and so we think that's a, a, hopefully a really powerful uh, value proposition to you is that you don't have to go find a bunch of devices in the wild and, and test on that. Um, basically, every time somebody reports a bug to us, we're able to fix it for everybody who's using the API. And that's, uh, that helps us scale really well. And finally, a little touch of Google magic. Um, what owning the application and the platform does is enables us to do some things that were a little bit more difficult for us to do at scale with every single management partner. So we're able to do some uh, cute little things in provisioning to make the flow a little bit more seamless for end users. We're able to sneak some things, like I mentioned, into settings, move things around a little bit. Uh, and what that enables us to do is just give a little bit more magical, a little bit cleaner experience. Um, but Ultimately, all of that's delivered through you as the vendor. It's not through us. We kind of disappear in this equation, and you're managing Android in the way that it's meant to be managed. So Nikita's going to run us through um, that previous example of mandatory app uninstall, show you how easy it is to change things up. Thanks, Ian. Uh, so here, uh, how the policy uh, JSON uh, blob would look like um, for the force installed app. In that case, we're actually installing a Chrome dev version. And, um, if we, if we need to remove that one, this is what you have to do. Essentially, you have to remove that uh, application from a JSON, and we'll take care of the rest. Uh, let's take, yeah, this is how the um, API call would look like. So again, that was previously a seven-step process that we couldn't possibly have documented all of the code that you would need to execute to make that happen. It's easy as simply removing an application from the list of apps that you want to distribute. Right. Um, this is uh, how the typical feature development may look like. So on the left, uh, the policy example, uh, there is a VPN app configured. And um, let's say you want to enable always on VPN. So you just add uh, this, um, this uh, three lines. Uh, in the center example, so uh, you, have, you may have a kiosk application, a kiosk uh, device configured with the several um, lockdown functionality, and Android P comes out, where we have more features like that, and you add three lines of um, policy code. Here, uh, on the right example, you've got dedicated device, um, and uh, again, in Android P, we introduced, we're introducing a shared devices functionality, where you can have a public session concept. Uh, for some of you who are familiar with Chrome OS, this may be a familiar concept. Uh, so you just add this uh, example on the right, and you got yourself a um, kind of public session kiosk. So actually, uh, we're going to demo how it's easy to switch between uh, these uh, three modes. So one Akita setting that up. Um, if a any of you have tried to, to ship an EMM, I know there's, there's some of you out there in the crowd, um, you'll remember that uh, making a change like that required client-side development, publishing your APK, all of the things Nikita said earlier, right? Publishing the APK, wiring things up on the console side, pushing a new console release, all of that could take months, right? Even if the individual sprints were just a couple, uh, a couple uh, sprints worth of work just to do the client-side implementation. We really think that moving everything to the cloud and enabling you guys to make very simple policy changes uh, will hopefully speed up your um, development velocity and uh, We'll talk a little bit about some of the developers who've had success with that in a bit. All right. Um, here I have Android uh, P device. Um, and here, um, this is the policy example. Um, here you can see there are a bunch of um, networks being configured. And by the way, so uh, you'll, you're going to use uh, this tool, this call app tool, uh, during the call up session with Fred and, and us uh, during lunch. So you'll get uh, to actually try it out. Uh, here, there is applications, a uh, few applications uh, configured, but actually my device over here is logged down into, into this single app you can see on the right. And uh, for those of you who actually um, implemented a feature like that, you know that when you put application uh, and device in lock task mode, uh, typically you would not have the home button. So there's the one here. <coughs> and uh, this is the OK, let me actually zoom in a bit. 
So this is the new P features. Uh, this is how we, we get the home button being visible here. Uh, all right. Now let me switch to the next mode. This would be the mode where we have uh, multiple um, chaos caps configured and we have a launcher for those apps. So if Wi Fi works well, we'll get this device switched to that mode pretty soon. And uh, let me show you. So th that's pretty much the same setup. The difference here is we, we've enabled um, our launcher here. So the notion here is we're going from a single app kiosk deployment, which would be a completely different use case, to a multi-app kiosk deployment uh, where you need a launcher, you need to be able to access several applications. Historically, if you had built one or uh, either of these solutions, you may have made uh, invested pretty significantly in getting exactly that use case correct. And to add the capabilities to go to the next use case, it may be similar to starting from scratch. There's a lot of things you could reuse, but it would take quite a lot of time. Here we're demonstrating a single change, a single line of code change uh, on a server will enable you to have a completely new use case. Um, so Nikita will show you how this one works. All right. Uh, another thing um, I wanted to point out, uh, so this is a uh, new P features where the lockdown is that there are no quick settings. However, we've enabled system info. So in that lockdown, um, battery information, uh, network information, and um, clock is here. Also, we've enabled notifications. Uh, so global action stands for this, for this menu. We can also remove that if uh, that's what you need for your deployment. Uh, here, I actually have a web application. So that's an uh, upcoming feature that's going to be available soon. So this is the Android Enterprise website. Um, as you can see, it feels like a native app. And I can switch back to the kiosk. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to switch to the shared devices mode. Uh, I've pre-configured this device. It actually has two other users. Uh, so you will see that in a bit. So again, now we're jumping to yet another use case. This one only available on Android P. And again, traditional development cycle means you probably wouldn't start to invest in this use case until P had at least, what, 2 5% adoption in the enterprise, maybe a couple top tier customers that are really asking for this scenario. Um, Nikita will show you how easy it is to support this new feature. Uh, it's the sort of thing that you could add for day zero support, uh, which makes it kind of a nice marketing story for you. Um, so here you can see um, this is actually Android management API client UI. So you've probably seen this one uh, on, the, on the previous uh, presentations. So we're using uh, new APIs available on Android P uh, to create uh, separate users. So each user here has its own uh, key guard, has its own set of um, unique applications. However, for optimization, we can actually uh, pre-cache uh, some of those apps in uh, user zero. Um, so this is where this UI is actually running. Let me sign in to this user. Uh, here you can see I can uh, end the session. I can also end the session from this menu. Uh, so this user has a pattern, and I've configured that uh, as the kiosk uh, launcher application. Uh, one thing to point out, uh, so for the Gmail that's configured here, we've used uh, managed configurations to, to set up uh, this account for this user. Uh, th this is actually using the Exchange account. All right, uh, now I'm going to switch to another user just to show you that it has a different key guard. Most secure password here. Uh, there is a web application, the one that I've shown before, and a Gmail for this user has a different. Uh, this one says guest three uh, account. All right, so let's switch back to the slides. Thanks, Nikita. So I know that was a lot of features. We kind of threw them all out at once because we had a lot of fun things we wanted to show you, but the. The code that you saw on the screen there, that's, that's real. There's no kind of hidden magic here. That, that's a real life policy that you could apply uh, using the Android management API. Not all of those features are launched just yet, but um, 
all of the, uh, you saw how simple it was, how easy it was to read the policy, um, and relatively how short it was uh, in comparison to building all of those features into an Android application and then managing that with your proprietary server code. Um, so all of that is real, uh, and you can come play around with it. Fred is going to lead us through getting started with that tool, the, the CoLab tool, so you can explore um, how to actually get started with the management API. We're going to do that uh, during lunch, have a nice little working lunch. Plus, I think, we'll, uh, I think we're getting food in that room, so you, know, you can have a little bit shorter line if you come join our session. Yes. Um, so hopefully you agree uh, that Android management API is the way to manage Android devices. Uh, we really think this is true, and we want to make sure that it stays true, so we're continuing to invest here and make sure that we're offering all the features you need to provide uh, great experiences to your end users. Fortunately, we're not the only ones who think so, so let's talk a little bit about some of our developers. Um, these are some folks in Brazil that we worked with as early access partners. Uh, and you can see that the, the value propositions that we sought to, to demonstrate for them really held true for them. They were able to make changes, push new features with just a couple lines of code, um, push it on the server side, and they were done. They didn't have to build any more applications themselves. And in fact, we have a nice uh, array of early access partners and folks, early adopters, who have been working with us since we launched um, uh, late last year. Uh, and there's, there's a couple cool use cases I want to call out here. So we have, we have a nice range of, of uh, use cases from different partners. So we have folks like Intune and Mobile Tech who are offering more robust kiosk solutions um, that are kind of generic to their end users. They can provide, enable any application to be kiosked or, um, or multi-app uh, launcher experiences like the ones you just saw. Um, but then we have kind of more line of business and proprietary use cases like uh, our friends Balut Yazilam over in Turkey. They make a uh, kiosk that goes in the back of taxis, uh, and that's the taxi meter. So they're running uh, the taxi infrastructure of Turkey off of uh, Android devices strapped to the back of cabs. Uh, and they're able to, they were able to skip all of the Android client-side development and proprietary um, stuff they would have had to build themselves and just use our API in order to manage those devices. Similarly, Yumpingo uh, is a partner of ours that is based out of London. They make a tablet uh, uh, for restaurant analytics, um, but they don't have to think anymore about how they manage those devices. All they have to do is think about the actual service that they're offering to their customers. Um, so if you're an EMM, this is a great opportunity to increase your feature development and your velocity. If you're a business application that needs some lightweight management in order to provide a more compelling use case to your customers, you can do that too. We really think there's a variety of use cases that can benefit from this. Um, in the uh, amount of time we have remaining, we just want to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of some new features coming out. Um, first one we're really excited about is zero touch provisioning. Also something we haven't talked about too much at this conference, but um, we think this is a really, really exciting uh, use case and really unblocks a lot of deployment challenges that, uh, that enterprises face. So I don't know if folks are familiar with the uh, Apple uh, DEP, is it DEP? Um, distribution. Um, so you can, you can buy a phone and, and, and drop ship it to somebody. This is, uh, this is the Android equivalent of, of a similar program with a few differences. Um, what we've enabled with our ecosystem partners is, is a way to take an Android device, buy it from an authorized reseller, uh, and then assign a configuration to that device uh, through the cloud so that that device arrives uh, at a user um, ready to go, already assigned to the management entity that's assigned for that IT admin, um, and potentially pre-configured for that user. So what we're doing with Zero Touch and the Android Management API is we're taking all of the complexity of integrating with Zero Touch directly from a management perspective and rolling it into the Management API. So what you'll be able to do with this is uh, actually get Zero Touch for free as a management entity. Um, we're going to kind of do a lot of little things behind the scenes so that when, you, uh, when a customer of yours uses Zero Touch through a reseller that sells a phone that can have Zero Touch enabled, we'll automatically turn that on and automatically assign it to your, um, to your management entity so that when that device arrives and is turned on for the first time, it's automatically enrolled and points back to you which is pretty powerful. It means you, you actually don't have to do much, pretty much anything at all to support this uh, if you use the Android Management API. If you want to take it a step further and you want to pre-provision that device, pre-designate that device for a role, say if you want it to be assigned specifically to Nikita, um, we'll surface the abilities um, to pass direct configurations to that device so that when it lights up, it goes, uh, fetches policy and knows, oh, this device is for Nikita. I'll fetch that specific policy. Or if it's a 
kind of a more kiosking scenario, it will be able to say like, oh, I, I am the wall unit on floor seven of building three. Uh, light up, get the appropriate policies, and, and phone home and uh, tell the server that it's been set up. So we're really excited to, to bake this in um, and make it even easier to use with the Android Management API. The second thing, oh, you'll forgive my slide, the second thing that we're really excited to announce is full support for our what we call knowledge worker use cases. So today we predominantly serve the um, KOSU and kiosking scenarios that you saw demoed earlier. Um, we're adding full support for knowledge worker use cases. You've maybe heard a little bit about work profile or fully managed devices at the conference. Um, these are for uh, folks that want to use uh, applications on the phone but need management in order to control access to data and make sure those devices um, are doing the things they're supposed to be doing. So we're going to support these use cases as well. Um, and you should expect uh, that by the end of the year, we'll have the, the kind of complete gamut of uh, management scenarios that you need. In fact, um, this one's coming out uh, relatively soon. I won't, uh, yeah. I won't sign us up for anything as, uh, or else he'll, uh, he'll beat me up. But um, we'll, uh, we'll give you a little bit of demo of this, though, to, to show you what it looks like if we've got a couple minutes. Cool. All right. OK, sorry for that. So what Nikita's pulling up here is a, what you can think of as like an enrollment page. So let's say the user navigates to a website, internal website, logs in with their credentials, right? So they say, I'm, you know, I'm Ian at Google. Uh, here's my password. And that website punts back uh, to a page that says, you should enroll. Click here to enroll. So clicking that link, Nikita's kicked off the enrollment flow that's baked into Android. Um, and he said, go. Now what you'll notice here is that we didn't download an, ac an application from Google Play. Um, we didn't have to go through a bunch of screens accepting terms and um, changing around and saying yes, no, here, whatever. Um, all of this is happening. We talked a little bit about the Google magic. All of this is kind of automated by us. And because we're the management application as well, we're able to streamline this provisioning process. So what previously would have taken 10 or so steps for the end user to go grab the application, log into the application, et cetera, um, we can just streamline uh, for, for any management vendor that wants to support it. So what you see here is the, the work profile is being set up. This is the BYOD scenario. So it's a separate, uh, separate user space for all your enterprise data. And once that's set up, um, what's going to happen is all the policies that were previously generated when the user logged into that web page and clicked that button, um, all of those policies will be applied by our management application. And it'll be connected back to, through the Android Management API and be uh, manageable through that, that endpoint. So it looks like we're set up. Go over to the Managed Play Store, which you might have heard a little bit about. Oh, it's so, taking its, so right now we're waiting for uh, Gmail to get installed. I guess it will take a few moments. Uh, while we're waiting for Gmail to install, we can show oh, it's actually installed. Uh, this is a new feature in P where Launcher has a separation for personal and work apps. All right. And that's Gmail pre-configured with um, managed config for Exchange account. Cool. Awesome. I think that is it. So um, just to summarize then, in conclusion, hopefully you agree with us, Android Management API is the way to manage Android devices. We're going to continue to invest in simplicity and making the, app, the API as easy to use as possible and as intuitive to use as possible, um, while at the same time making it nice and feature rich for you to support the variety of use cases that you need uh, with your customers. And we'll continue to invest in kind of these magical experiences like the provisioning flow um, that you just saw, making this look and feel like native Android. If you want to get started with the Android Management API, again, Fred is going to lead us through a hands-on session at lunch over in Jelly Bean. Um, he'll get you not only set up and playing with the API, you'll be able to provision devices live. We'll be walking around with some devices so you can see what that's like. Um, and you'll be able to take home, <laughs> take home the setup that you'll have created. Uh, and that will be a live setup of the Android Management API that you can continue to use and test with your applications and think about new use cases that you want to support. 
thanks so much. Um, we're a large crew here. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to come ask. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Nikita. Thanks.